Why not? After a crazy win on Titanic, we're going around the horn. $100 spins till we hit a jackpot. Or we run into another person playing. If someone's playing a couple of machines down, one credit spins. We got a hundred bucks in double diamonds. Here we go. Come on. Let's get another one. Thank you. 500 bucks. We're going to print that ticket and go down to the left. Thank you. All right, triple dollars. What can you do? Get my card in there. Make sure it's working. Reinsert it, of course. 500 more. I want that credit. All right, we're good to go. Here we go, one, then we're moving to the left. Hmm, we're gonna print it and move. Discipline, discipline, discipline. Sorry. <laughs> Good luck. All right. A little double desire. Someone is playing. On triple double diamond, but it's all good. Double desire. One spin, we're two for two. Can we be three for three? we go. Got excited. Not this time. All right, black and white double jackpot. We're not going to be biased. We're going to give you one spin too. Otherwise, people would cry foul. Unfair. And I got a 50 in here somewhere. Of course, my card isn't working, which is a whole other story. Here we go. One max bet. Basically, we're two out of three for spin magic. Can we be three out of four? Can you take my $50 bill? Hopefully you will. Here we go. Take it, take it, take it. Come on. You can do it. All right. One more. It's over to Mr. Haywire. Here we go. What are you talking about? What are you talking about with that? A thousand bucks? Seriously? First spin. Hey now. Print it and move over to the left. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's what I call discipline. Some of you may say, what's wrong with you? That was a hot machine. I say... Go on, take the money and run. That's it. You just gave me a line hit, or you gave somebody else a line hit. Maybe you'll give me another $500 mix bar. Here we go. Can't complain though in this bank. Let's see. All right, we're good to go. One more here.
Almost, but not this time. But we're happy with this bank, unless, is it still open? Are we still open with triple double diamond? All right, she left, she left. One more shot. One more shot, right here, right now. Let's do it, let's do it. She left, she left, she left, she left. What, you wanna play this? Nope. You never play this. Uh, of course. You got it Moss's card in. I don't spin until I see it ready to go. Especially with the status points. Because we know Mohegan is uh, notorious for green screens. There we go. All right, come on. We're okay over here. One more. Not this time, but not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. What are we gonna do next? We shall see. This bank is very nice, very nice, very nice. Cheers all. Lucky four leaf clover in a dollar version with $30 in there. It's bucks and banter time. Today, got a question from Bill Duff. Have you ever found a large cash out ticket in the casino? And if you did, what did you do with it? Well, usually I find change, maybe less than $10 left in a slot machine or small tickets, you know, on the floor or around the ticket redemption, etc. But actually this year I did find a $500 ticket and it was right in these bank of $100 slots that I was just playing. Here's what happened. I was with mom and we were having lunch at Mohegan in the lounge with our favorite employee at Mohegan, Michelle. Right behind us, $100 slots, I heard Mr. Haywire going off with the jackpot. I looked back there and I told mom somebody had just won two grand on one of my favorite machines. Well, about a half hour later, we were walking through that high limit room and I looked at Mr. Haywire and there was a ticket sitting right there at the dispenser. I pulled it out and it was 500 bucks. I walked over to a slot attendant and she told me to go take it to security, which I did. I expected security to tell me that if nobody claims it within a certain period of time, it would be mine. This was not the case, however, and I was ugh, kind of annoyed. They told me they would track down the person who it belonged to. If I found cash or chips, I could keep that, but a ticket is a different story. Well, needless to say, I was quite annoyed, but, but Mom, in her infinite wisdom, told me I did the right thing and that the good deed would come back to me. Since it was quiet in the casino that day, I kind of figured it was the person who just won the jackpot and forgot to grab the ticket before they left, so they probably were going to track that person down, but it didn't really make me feel better. However, two weeks later, I did come back to Mohegan, and on a $10 bet, guess what? I won $500, so I was super happy. And about a month after that, I had a titanic victory, so go figure. Ironically though, I've got a video coming out with my friend Mr. C where there's a $500 ticket situation in the exact reverse. And I'll explain in that video all the details and you will be surprised with the ending. So as always guys, I thank you for your books and banter questions. If you do have a books and banter question, you can ask it in any video, hashtag BB, and it might be answered in an upcoming video. And again, looks like Lucky Four Leaf Clover is not gonna be lucky unless something happens in the next couple of spins. this time. Cheers all. Thank you so much for your support and your love for old school slots. Well, after that win, it's time for a celebration snack. And today, guys, we have Moss's famous beans and rice. Rice and beans, arroz con frijoles, whatever you want to call it, it is delicious. And I'm going to show you how to make it right now. All right, so here we have the ingredients to make Moss's beans and rice. We have two cups of white rice just cooking in the rice cooker right now. It is uh, about 
It's a half of a medium green pepper diced, also half of a small onion diced, salt, pepper, olive oil, the refried beans. Uh, this is the brand that we use that uh, I think tastes the best, Ducal. It's actually made by Goya. Might be a little hard to find, but you can always use your favorite refried beans out of a can. You make it fresh. Sometimes Moss does that, but we're being lazy today. This comes in black or uh, red beans and uh, have the can out here, but I think we might use the red beans because I think that's what Moss wants tonight. And here's a little secret ingredient, just the Sasson um, seasoning mix and Moss uses probably about uh, two thirds to maybe the whole thing, depending on how much. If we make a little less rice, use a little less Sasson, it is definitely a little bit goes a long way. So uh, let's get started and make this bad boy up. All right, so in a saucepan, we're gonna put about a quarter of a cup of olive oil and get it really, really hot. That's the key and that's Moss's trick. The pan is super hot and we're adding the olive oil in there now. And we're gonna add the green pepper and the onion. Again, super hot. Sizzle, 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 be careful. It will splatter a little bit. And we're gonna add the onion. And get that in there. Give it a quick stir and hit it with a little salt and pepper, of course. Gotta season it. Uh, a sprinkle of salt. Awesome. Get that to where the caramelization occurs on the onions and the peppers. It will be delicious. And uh, once this is nice and done, we're gonna go to the next step. Be right back. All right. So the uh, peppers and onions have been sauteing in the oil for about five minutes or so. You can see it's got a nice caramelized color. And we're gonna take the refried beans, got it out of the can, and just put it on in there and just mix it around. And then we're gonna add the sasson and the rice. And guess what? It's done. How easy is that? So let's let this blend together and I'll be right back. All right guys, and as you can see, just after a minute or two, it's all blended together, nice and soft like that. So we're gonna take the packet of sasson and put that in there. <laughs> it gives it a nice red color. And then we're taking about half the rice and just putting it in. And we add more rice as we go, depending on the consistency that you like. Everybody makes rice and beans differently. And this is Moss's style. And I love it. So let's see how this is. What do you think, Moss? A little more rice? No, I think it's good. A little more olive oil. Maybe. A little more olive oil? Sure. All right, add a little more olive oil and it is almost ready for the table. Be right back. All right, we just added about maybe a quarter cup more rice and this is done. Beautiful. And there you have it guys, Moss's beans and rice. Such a delicious side dish, goes awesome with steak, with chicken, anything really. Kids love it, everybody loves it. And it's a personal preference. If you wanna have it a little bit more beany, less rice, a little more olive oil. You wanna have it a little drier, you can add more rice. It's entirely up to you. But as long as you season it with the sasson, salt and pepper, you uh, saute the onions and peppers to a nice caramelized color, you'll be good to go and everyone will be happy. So cheers all. Thank you so much for watching this celebratory snack. And as always, I thank you for your support. And I really hope that I can bring you more celebration snacks because that means the slots are being nice to old school. Cheers, have a great day.